Listen, love is beautiful. It's not something that I personally desire. Um, I think you have to be one of those mushy, mushy people to really appreciate a relationship. I just don't like human beings very much. I don't have the type of personality that makes me very likable as a person. I can admit that. Um, but I I just don't like human beings. And um, I'm a very unique person, very weird person. I like things a certain way. Like, I, I like a lot of me time. And I've done a video about this before. Um, it was called, I think, something like Unconventional Relationships. Um, and and I was talking about how that's the only way that I could exist in a relationship um, and and sustain a healthy one for a long period of time. Um, you have to really just accept me for me and my weirdness. And when I say unconventional, I mean different outside the box. Like, I don't want to sleep in the bed with another person. That, that's just a no-no for me. I need my own bed i like to wrap up in my blanket like a taco i don't like to just be up under the blanket um i don't like the idea of laying next to somebody and them farting uh that just disgusts me uh i don't like the idea of being up under somebody and they sweating and all their dead skin cells are getting on me and no i barely even like the fuck i barely like the fuck for that reason but I have to get my shit off because I'm human. So I, I try to get it off real quick and then it's like, get the fuck out. I don't like intimacy. It turns me off. It's like, eh, ah, get away from me. You know what I'm saying? But for people who do, good for you. If you a lover boy or a lover bitch, good for you. But I'm going to tell you what I don't like. And it's people who feel like they can't exist. Outside their relationship. I told you. I don't care if you see this video or not. I told you about an old friend of mine. Um, who was on this video. On this channel. I'm sorry. Um, a few times. We did like maybe like two videos together. He definitely wasn't on here as much as like Dante and Barb. Remember Lady B back in the day. He, wasn't, he, didn't, he didn't make that many appearances. But he was clearly a dude that was just not a friend. Right. Because during the first three, four years of me and Smitty. I put his name out there. Our relationship. Um, from 2011 when I, I first saw him at Convocation Because um, we, we was under the same umbrella of churches He went to the same umbrella of churches as me And uh, we would have this event every year in August Where all the churches under this umbrella come together And he saw me and was like, oh, you J-Love 47 And we, you know, we jotted each other's number down and, and we stayed in touch for the most part He would hit me up once in a blue moon He had messaged me and say something And we'd have a little conversation I want to say that was 2011. Now, around 2013, he would hit me up a little more frequently. Every three to four months, and we would have an extended, long conversation over the phone. But then around 2015, two years later, I started to notice a pattern. And that's that he only called me when he really needed something, when he needed support with what he was going through. Which was a, a, a situation very similar to Antoine Fisher. Remember that movie uh, where the person was like, I think, tampered with or touched touched on, and therefore they were struggling with um, attracting the women or having been intimate with women because the last time that they were intimate with a woman, it was an adult woman who was violating them um, and sexually abusing them. And so he struggled with that, and we, 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 I tried to get him, help him through that. But then when he finally got a girl, who he has a baby by, a son by, a beautiful son, he would only call me when they would go through things. That's the only time he called me. And it almost became a laughing joke because it was a couple times he called, and I said, what's going on with you and, you know, uh, Patty? I ain't gonna put a real name out there. And he would laugh on the phone like, <laughs> well, Jay, I mean, this, she on some bullshit, Jay, and she this, she this, she that. But it was like, bro, you only fuck, you only called me for advice. Like, cause you see me as a big brother, I'm like four or three years older than him. 
You only call me for advice. You don't call me to see how I'm doing. You don't call me just to have conversation with me. And now that I think about it, looking back, the only reason he stayed with me is because he had nowhere else to go because she wasn't there for him. She didn't uh, take him in, even though he took her in and her her damn near 17 year old son in because she was far old. She was much older than him. And, you know, I came across an Instagram post the other day and the guy said that he said the, the worst quality of a man is a motherfucker that just abandoned his, his friends once he get a woman. I just always thought that was just so pussy. Like, it's like you can't exist without your girlfriend. And women are the same way. I've heard a lot of women say this. They had friends, and when they got in relationships, they act like they... Like, why is that? Like, what? Why can't you have relationships outside of the relationship you have with your partner? That's an intimate relationship. Don't you want a platonic relationship? Don't you want other people who you can have conversations with? Like, you enjoyed these people before, or did you enjoy these people before your significant other uh, came about? W was they just people that they were just there? That you just, you just, they was just there to entertain you? Until until you got in a relationship and then you just like forgot all about them? Clearly, you don't, you ain't give two fucks about them. Because this new person, whether they're an intimate partner or not whether they're your wife or not whether they're your husband or not you knew the other person you knew your friends way longer than them and friendships typically last way longer than relationships we know relationships don't even last nowadays but six months and they damn sure uh relationship friendships last longer than marriages nowadays that woman gonna come and go. That man gonna come. Men gonna come and go. Women come and go. Wives, husbands, sometimes they come and go. That friend is always gonna be there. Nine times out of ten. But it's just crazy how, like, like it, looking back and reflecting over our our friendship is like, damn, that boy really ain't fuck with me like that. And he only probably stayed with me because he just wanted to get away from his, his dysfunctional family. Like, did he really fuck with me? He ain't fuck with me like that. Cause I can't get a phone call from him now. You know, I would have to initiate conversation with him. Now I know he is a little socially awkward, and he's a little—he's always been a weirdo. So he has this thing where it's like, if you don't hit him up for a long period of time, he—he uh, he might feel like he done something wrong. So in order to break the ice, you have to initiate the conversation. And then if you do that, he will hit you up. He will communicate with you over the phone. He had gotten better. I even went over to his house. Y'all seen the video, the, the recent video. Not recent, but the video from last year where I said, go on to see my friend after, you know, three years of not seeing him. I didn't see him for three years after he moved when we was living with each other. But aside from, I'm going to get off of him. It's just, it's just weird, bro. Like, it's just like, I don't understand somebody that just, to me, that's like obsession. When you just want to be up under your partner 24 fucking seven. Like you don't love nobody but them. That's, that's giving something weird, and I can't really put my finger on it. But something ain't right with a person that only has an interest in being up under one person. That's a significant other. You don't want to spend time with nobody else, or is it that your significant other don't want you spending time with someone else? And sometimes that's the case, too. Sometimes the significant other feels threatened by other people. They're possessive and they're jealous. And you allow them to come into your life and ruin these relationships and compromise these relationships to satisfy them because you know they're jealous. And so you alienate yourself from people that you used to always fuck with to make them happy because you don't want them to feel jealous. You don't want them to be in because they're very insecure and territorial. You don't want them to feel a certain way about you dividing your time, even when you're giving them far more time than you're giving your friends who you knew first. But that person comes into your life and suddenly feel like because they're your partner that, you know, they matter more, especially if they're religious. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Especially if they're religious, you know, the Bible say, you know, like dedicate yourself to your, to your, your, your husband and your wife. 
Like they come first. Even it even says they're supposed to come first before your children. It's crazy to me. And your mother. It's crazy to me. There ain't no motherfucking way in hell. But you act like you can't exist without this person. You like you can't live without this person. That is very unhealthy. That's why relationships don't last because you're around that person all the time. Listen, if I'm around somebody 24-7, I get sick and tired of seeing their face. I've heard so many other people say this too. Like, they be like telling their husband, yeah, like, 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 go go around your male friends. Find some male friends. Go out. You don't want to do nothing with, 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 with men? You're a man. You don't want to do men stuff? Men usually have male interests. Going to football games. Going to baseball games. Having male conversations. Talk about things that men like to talk about. You don't have no interest in doing any of those things? Playing sports? Hanging out with your boys? You want to sit up under your woman like a bitch 24-7? You want to be up under uh, up under her, her titty like a baby being breastfed? That's not like mommy issues. That's not like detachment issues. Like you're afraid of being detached from this person. Like you're 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 like heavily like becoming codependent on them. Sometimes you got to give a person time, time to, to miss you. You got to keep things fresh. Eventually, you won't get tired of a person. Oh, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> it don't seem like he gets tired of her. She ain't saying he, she gets tired of him. They're up around each other all the time. I, I don't know. How, that would drive me crazy. Whether I love you or not, it would drive me crazy to be up under my partner and significant other 24-7 and to only have them in my life and to not have no friends. Well, I'll just say this. You better make sure that motherfucking marriage or that relationship work. Because those friends that you 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 dumped in, in, in so many words, those friends that you had like you don't have no time for, no interest in even talking to. Your significant other means so much to you, you not you don't even want to pick up the phone and check up on your friends or family. I hope they still I hope they're forgiven and they still there for you when that marriage don't work out. The one that you sacrifice your relationships for. Yeah, I hope when she's no longer in your life, you can go back and, and, and resume those those previous friendships with your family and, and friends. I hope they're forgiving because most people are, are not. Because what they understand and realize is that they was never a friend. Because when somebody's a friend, you love them. And you want to be around them. And you want to communicate with them. And you want to hang with them. And you want to chill with them. And that desire and the to be around them and that affection that you have for them and that enjoyment that you have being their friend doesn't end suddenly when you get married. I understand like if you're newlyweds or whatever, it's going to come a period of time where you want to, you know, just your relationship is new. So you're trying to spice things up and, you know, get to know each other even more. And you're married. It's fresh. It's new. I understand. It's like, it's like a new toy you want to, you want to, you want to play with. But after a while, you're like, oh, I'm ready to balance things out now. Play my other toys I ain't played with in a while. Bring them back out the garage. But when you just like dump and just throw everything away for one person, that is very strange behavior. It's very codependent. It's very obsessive. Like you my all, you my everything. And I don't know why it seemed like me for whatever reason, I attract a lot of friends like that. I've had a lot of sucker friends. I never had a real cool male friend. All my male friends have been pussy whipped. Lover boys. They just want to be up under a woman 24-7. There's nothing wrong with wanting to spend time with your woman. I'm not saying that. You should want to spend time with your woman. Having a woman is a beautiful thing. Having a partner is a beautiful thing. But you can't, you, you just like, you just completely exiled your friends from your life. You just completely forgot about them. How can you forget about somebody that you claim you love? Somebody that you claim saved your life. How can you possibly forget about them? That means you never really liked them. That means they was just there. That's how you treat somebody that you don't... Somebody that you really don't like and they're just like... You're using them as like a... A fill-in or like a, a replacement. Like you just need someone to talk to to pass time or you... You know, you don't really have a companion. You don't really have any friends. So it's like, I'm just talking to this person because I have no one else to talk to. That's what you do to people who you really don't care about. People who are just there to comfort you in that moment. 
you let them go when you find something better. But when you truly love someone and you have a real relationship with them and a real friendship with them, that love for them, that affection for them, that enjoyment that you have and that pleasure that you get and that gratification you get by them being in your lives, that don't just suddenly stop when you get in a relationship. You're exposing yourself. You was never a friend. You never fucked with me all like that. Because if you did, you will be checking up on me. You will be concerned about me. You'll be reaching reaching out. You'll be trying to figure out what's going on in, in Jay's life. You wouldn't just not give a fuck. It's weird to me, man. And I just wanted to rant about it. I'm going to let y'all go. Bring this video to a close. It, it, it just irks me. People like that irk me. Like, when they just all booed up and they just like act like they just can't have nothing outside of like their their relationship with their boo is the only thing that they allowed to have or that they want to have that's close minded that's like like obsessive that's equivalent to me like somebody that just want to eat the same thing every day like that's that's not love that's some weird shit Normal people have their partner and they spend time with they most of that time goes to their partner, but they make sure that they hang out with their friends. Hey, babe, me and uh Ray and me and John, we can Ray go. All right, you know, and your significant part other should have a cool, healthy, you would think, relationship. They they should see your friends that you known all your life or for you know many years before you met them, they should see them as like a brother. They should also maybe, you know, see them as a friend. I don't understand. I don't understand why people act like they can't be cool with their friends and maintain relationship with their friends when they get in relationships. Like some things are going to be different. Some things are going to change, but we can still be cool. We don't have to, you don't have to tell me stories about the bitches that you, you, you like and, and the bitches that you want to fuck because you're in a relationship now. But we just still lots of things for us to talk about because we had a lot in common other than just talking about relationships. You know? Um But yeah, that's obsessive to me. It's obsessive and um it sounds like a very boring life. But like I, I I couldn't imagine just only wanting to be around one person. Like that person is is that special, like 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 that tells me that your friends really didn't offer anything like irreplaceable. I feel like friends should be irreplaceable. I feel like friends should offer you something that can't be replaced. That's why you like them so much. That's why you, you love them so much. And if your girlfriend is able to provide you with all the the things that your your male friends were able to provide you or if your husband is able to provide you with all of the same things that your female friends are able to provide you which i know they not because they're a male because they're, they're the opposite gender but it just makes you wonder like why don't you have any interest why do you feel like now that you're in a relationship that you can't maintain your relationship even if it's to a, a lesser degree why do you feel like you cannot maintain your relationship with the people that were in your life before this individual came about that you that you love so much before you met your significant other your wife your husband why does that have to stop you can't balance the two you can't multitask relationships are you only capable of being deeply connected with one person what is it it's strange but it's revealing and it, it lets you know that you you was you was just there. You was just there until they found what they but he's always been a sucker like that for women. Every time he got a woman, it was just like she was just like his everything. Like he was just a sucker for women, like pussy whipped. Get a little bit of coochie and lose his mind. And he just make his his morning, afternoon, evening, night. When he's sitting on the toilet, he probably thinking about her. When he eating dinner, he with her. When he eating breakfast, he with her. When he at work, he calling her. Like that's obsession. That ain't healthy. I hope when that person go, that you able to still function, and that you don't run back to the people you abandoned later. <laughs>